Welcome to the 5 Minute Biographies YouTube channel. Here is your host, Wayne Armstrong. Hi guys, thanks for watching the show. Just a quick reminder to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the biographies we've got coming along in the future. Also, if you'd like to show your support for the show by, say, buying me a coffee, please head on over to 5minutebiographies.com forward slash coffee or click the link at the top of the screen or in the show notes to see how. That being said, let's get on with the show and the 5 Minute Biographies presentation of Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong had flying in the blood, one might say. Born in Ohio on the 5th of August 1930, Neil Armstrong attended his first aviation event at the Cleveland Air Races at the ripe old age of only two. By the age of six, he had taken his first ride in a plane, when he and his father flew in a Ford Trimotor in Warren, Ohio. During high school, he started to take flying lessons, getting his flight certificate on his 16th birthday, which was before he even got his driver's licence. However, this was not the only area in which Neil Armstrong excelled, as he also demonstrated exemplary leadership, character and academic prowess by achieving the rank of Eagle Scout in the Boy Scouts, even being awarded a Distinguished Eagle Scout Award. He studied aeronautical engineering at Purdue, the university he had chosen to attend even though he had been accepted into MIT. Everyone knows that Neil Armstrong is famous for being the first man to step foot on the moon, but he achieved much more than that before he even joined NASA. He was a naval officer and flew missions in the Korean War while stationed on the aircraft carrier USS Essex, flying the Grumman F-9F Panther. Despite his extreme flying proficiency and his love for his chosen vocation, his plane was taken down by an anti-aircraft cable during a low-level bombing mission in 1951. The cable sliced off a large section of the wing, and although Neil Armstrong managed to get the aircraft back into friendly territory, he was forced to eject and was picked up by his flight school roommate in his jeep. In total, he flew 78 missions over Korea, with his last one being on the 5th of March 1952. After the Korean War, he went back to Purdue to finish his degree, and during this time he met Janet Elizabeth Sheeran, and the couple were married on the 28th of January 1956. They went on to have three children together, Eric, Karen and Mark, although unfortunately Karen was soon diagnosed with a malignant brain tumour and died at the age of only two. Following a marriage that lasted 38 years, Neil and Janet divorced in 1994, having been separated since 1990. Neil would meet his second wife, Carol, in 1992. They married on the 12th of June 1994. During his time at college, Neil Armstrong was never far away from aviation and became president of the Purdue Flying Club. Following his graduation, he became a test pilot with the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics at Edwards Air Force Base, reporting for duty on the 11th of July 1955. During his time there, Armstrong piloted a number of different aircraft types, including the North American F-100 Super Sabre, the Lockheed F-104 Starfighter, the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II and the Boeing B-29 Super Fortress, among others. Having piloted multi-engined propeller-driven aircraft as well as fast jets, he also flew the rocket-powered aircraft, the Bell X-1B, and the North American X-15, which he flew seven times, reaching speeds of up to 6,420 km per hour, or Mach 5.74. In June 1958, Armstrong began participating in the US Air Force Man in Space Soonest program, which was soon replaced by Project Mercury, a civilian program run by NASA. The goal was to try and find smart, capable and accomplished pilots who possessed the necessary attributes to enable them to become astronauts. Although Neil Armstrong was not part of the first group selected by NASA for the astronaut corps, he was quickly picked up in the second group, which was selected in 1962 for a new project called Gemini, with Armstrong being selected as commander of Gemini 8, thus becoming the first civilian in space, as he had resigned his Air Force commission on the 21st of October 1960. 
This particular Gemini mission, which launched in 60, on the 16th of March 1966, was of extreme importance to NASA, as it was going to be the first time that the docking of two spacecraft would be attempted. That part of the mission was a success. However, due to some technical malfunctions, the mission ended up being cut short, with Armstrong showing off his control proficiency by stabilising a dangerous roll that had occurred due to a stuck thruster. This could have been catastrophic not just for the mission but also for the astronauts had it not been for the cool and level-headed pilot at the controls. However, all of this was only leading up to that seminal moment on the 20th of July 1969 when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed with Apollo 11 on the lunar surface, becoming the first people ever to do so. This has often been considered the moment of the 20th century, even though that century had seen two titanic world wars, a massive cold war, the invention of heavier-than-air flight and the harnessing of nuclear energy. Of the two astronauts that landed on the moon, it was Neil Armstrong that had been selected to place the first human footprints on the lunar surface, an achievement that was being watched by over half a billion people around the world, some 20% of the world's population at the time, as he uttered the legendary words, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin spent over two hours the following day on the lunar surface conducting tests and collecting samples. Upon their return, they received many awards and accolades, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom awarded to them by President Richard Nixon, the Congressional Space Medal Award by Jimmy Carter, and the Congressional Gold Medal. Although Neil Armstrong officially resigned from NASA in 1971, he continued to keep a close relationship with them and was repeatedly called back as an accident investigation expert. He lent his expertise during the investigation into what went wrong with the Apollo 13 mission, as well as the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster. Upon his retirement from NASA, he worked in the Department of Aerospace Engineering as a professor at the University of Cincinnati, where he taught until 1979. Although he would never again be able to reach the heights of the Apollo 11 mission, Neil Armstrong enjoyed a long and prosperous career. He died on the 25th of August 2012 following complications associated with coronary bypass surgery. He was 82 years old. Upon hearing of Neil Armstrong's death, President Barack Obama said that he was among the greatest of American heroes, not just of his time, but of all time. We hope you enjoyed that episode of 5 Minute Biographies. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for plenty more videos to come.